If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome back to The Frugal Filmmaker, the place where dreams can come true. Now in the last episode, I teased everyone saying that this episode would feature the number one most requested piece of DIY gear. And as you can tell from the title, it's a camera crane or a jib, essentially a camera on the end of a pole. It allows you to get swooping up and down shots, low angle shots, high angle shots, all kinds of things. But they're expensive, so people asked me to build one inexpensively. Now the criteria that I had for this build was it had to be under $30, it had to be transportable, and it had to be made from off-the-shelf parts. And this is what I came up with. Now I must add a disclaimer here saying that the $30 does not include the heavy duty tripod you'll need, the monitoring system, or the counterweights. All of those things you can do in a variety of ways which I have no control over, but I'll, I will show you how I did mine. But the $30 essentially is the crane itself. Now that being said, let's build the thing. Okay, here's your parts list. You've got a 10 foot piece of steel chain link top rail. Notice the tapered end, that's important. You've got a group of PVC parts here, half inch PVC. There's a 3 inch piece of PVC pipe and a 5 inch piece of PVC pipe. You have a T joint, you've got an elbow joint, you have a pair of plugs, and you have an end cap. And here's some quarter inch bolts, they're an inch and a half in length. And you've got a couple of nuts to go with them. Uh, you've got a pair of training wheels here. These are pulleys, they have uh, plastic wheels and rubber groove tires, very important. Here's a hook and eye turnbuckle, it's the smallest one you can find. Here's some 50 pound test line, that's fishing line. You've got a dumbbell handle with screw collars. You've got this piece of steel angle that uses our camera platform. Uh, you've got a 3 inch bolt. It's a 3 8 inch bolt. It's got some uh, 3 8 inch nuts. You've got a pair of 3 8 inch fender washers. You have a quarter inch machine screw and a couple of nuts and a lock washer to go with it. Uh, you've got a quick plate from your tripod. You've got a 4 inch 3 8 inch bolt. You've got a pair of 3 8 inch fender washers. You've got a regular 3 8 inch washer and a lock washer. And you have four 3 8 inch nuts right here. One, two, three, four. Oh, and I almost forgot. You need a way to screw your camera to the platform. So here's a quarter inch uh, screw with a cool knob attached to it. You need about five or six threads on your quarter inch screw. Here's another uh, quarter inch machine screw with a quarter inch wing nut. That's about two and a half inches. Okay, here's your tool list. You'll need a hand drill along with an actual real drill press. You can't drill through that steel without a drill press. Here's some scissors. You have a pair of screwdrivers, a uh, Phillips and a flathead. You've got two different wrenches here, actually similar in size, a 9 16 and a 14. And then you've got a 7 16 wrench. You've also got a pair of PVC ratcheting cutters to cut the PVC with. And you'll need some way to cut metal. And this is a cheap, flimsy hacksaw. I wouldn't recommend you use this. You use something like a chop saw or a sawzall or something. But if you have to use a hacksaw, I feel sorry for you. Okay, when you get your top rail at the hardware store, have them cut it in half there. Go to your plumbing aisle. They should have a pipe cutter there, and they'll cut the, the top rail in half for you. This makes it a lot easier than trying to do it at a later date. So make them do the work. They'll do it for free. Now take the end you just cut off, not the tapered end, and drill a hole two feet from one of those ends. That's a 3 16 inch hole right there. Then take your tapered end, flip it around, and have them drill the same size hole one inch from the end. It's also 3 16 
Now flip both ends around and insert one end into the other, drilling a hole through both pieces. This is how you join your ends together and secure them so they don't fall apart. Next up, take your dumbbell handle and cut it right in half. This is a solid steel bar inside, so hopefully you have something with some power behind it. Now take your top rail with the hole drilled two feet from one end and take one of your dumbbell halves and grind down the edge on the sidewalk and pop it in the end. Now originally the idea was to take the dumbbell handle, insert it into the top rail and hit it with a mallet or a hammer to get it to stay, but I actually found that if you took the dumbbell handle and put it into the top rail and turned it like a screw, it would go right in. Now this would shave away a little bit of the padding on the dumbbell handle, but it works amazingly and it looks like it belongs there. For your tilt lever assembly, you're going to take one of your training reels and drill two holes opposite each other in the rubber of the tire. Do the same thing with your half inch PVC plugs. These are quarter inch holes. And you're using them because you're going to use a quarter inch screw. One of your quarter inch screws is an inch and a half long. And assemble it like so. Your quarter inch nut goes here. Hold it with your finger and tighten it with uh, your Phillips head if that's what your screw requires. Then just insert a flathead screwdriver against the nut so that it stays put and tighten the thing up. And do the same with the opposite side. Then you can assemble your PVC parts like so. The smaller PVC pipe, your 3 inch pipe, will go in the middle of your two joints. And your 5 inch piece will go in the end of your T joint like this as your handle and your cap goes on the end to complete the look. And there you go. Here are the parts for your camera mount. Take your second pulley or training wheel and drill another quarter inch hole in the rubber like this. This will allow you to take your uh, quarter inch machine screw, inch and a half in length, and pass it through a lock washer and a fender washer and through the pulley. Put a nut on the other end and then tighten it up using your one of your screwdrivers and your 7 16 inch wrench. Now take your steel angle and put it over the protruding uh, machine screw and quarter inch nut. Follow that with a fender washer and another quarter inch nut. Tighten these down with the wrench and the screwdriver. Now this is going to give you your camera platform, but I must add that after I did this, I had to take the whole thing apart and actually bend the steel angle upwards a little bit because the weight of the camera was causing it to give too much on the rubber giving me a crooked shot. So I had to go back and put the steel angle in a vise and beat it with a hammer a little bit so that it would compensate for the weight of the camera. To start your wire assembly you're going to take your 50 pound test fishing line and cut off 18 feet of it. Next you're going to take that 18 feet and measure 7 inches in from one end, bend it over, and create a loop. Do the same on the other end. Then take one of those loops and pass it through the eye of the turnbuckle. Take the opposite loop and pass it through the first loop and snug it up tight and you're done. Just remember that when you store it you're going to need to wrap it around a spool of some kind otherwise it'll tangle easily and you'll have to do the whole thing over. It's not fun. Okay, let's put some of these pieces together. Uh, first we're going to take our tripod head and tilt it completely downward. And I'm going to put my quick plate uh, inside of that, which exposes this great 3 8 inch hole that my uh, Bogan 501 head quick plate comes with. This allows me to pass through our 4 inch bolt. I've got mine padded with some washers and a lock washer. I can just put it through this hole here. And then cover that with a fender washer, 3 8 inch fender washer. And I take the rear section of the pole uh, with the weight uh, screw collar on one end, put it on like this. I then cover it with another fender washer and lock it down with a nut. Now it's important to lock these down pretty tightly because if you've got your holes aligned properly, they'll only be level if it's snug against the quick plate or the fender washer. 
I'm going to tighten it down pretty good here. And they're going to put a second nut over that and tighten them against each other. Next goes on the tilt lever assembly, and you're going to buy, uh, uh, you're, and you're going to put two more nuts over that to hold it on. Now it's important that this is snug and doesn't rattle, but not too snug because then you won't be able to turn it. Actually, it might be a good idea to put a washer in between the nuts and the plastic as the plastic was getting shaved off. I was noticing. Then tighten both those nuts against each other when you have it in the right spot. Next, join your two halves together. Line up the holes and pass your quarter inch uh, machine screw through both pieces of pipe and secure it with your wing nut. You don't need to tighten this with a screwdriver, you can just use your hands because all you want to do is keep it from falling apart. Okay, now rest your opposite end on a chair or something, since now you've got a 10 foot pole to deal with. And pass your 3 inch, uh, 3 eighths inch bolt through the hole that's an inch from the end. Secure it with a nut, and then tighten the whole thing down with your two wrenches. Next, take your camera mount assembly and slide it over the protruding bolt. You'll then put two more of your 3 8 inch nuts over this. Make sure the pulley isn't rattling, but it's secure, yet somewhat loose. And then tighten the two nuts against each other. Okay, let's attach your wire assembly by wrapping your wire around your tilt lever on one end and your camera pulley on the other. You'll then take your open loop and attach it to the hook on your turnbuckle, like so. Next, get full tension by turning your tilt lever around like this and bite the wire into the pulley. If you don't have enough tension, tighten up the turnbuckle. All you have to do now is attach your camera. Now the counterweights are of the half inch variety, which are the least expensive. You can get used ones at a thrift store or new ones at Walmart for about a dollar a pound. The most important thing about counterweights are that you'll, you'll know when you're balanced because you can let go of your crane and it won't move. That's what you want. Now if you want to see what you're shooting, you're going to need some kind of monitoring system. I've recycled my old video camera to use it as a monitor. I've got a cable running from the video outputs of my HD camera on the end of the jib to the video inputs on this SD camera. The nice thing about using an old video camera is that you probably already have batteries and it's got a built-in mounting system. Now I've got the video cables wire tied down the length of the entire pole but I've got a coupler in the middle so that when I break down the pole, I can also break down the cables and leave them attached. Okay, now the biggest problem you're going to have to contend with is probably the canted angle or crooked shot that you might end up with that you didn't plan on. This is because the platform isn't bent enough or it's giving too much on the pulley or the top rails aren't, the holes aren't properly aligned, or whatever. You just have to tweak these things until you get the straightest shot you can get. And even if you can't get the straightest perfect shot because of all these factors, you can always turn the thing in post. Just take your frame and tweak it a little bit. You can do this in Vegas with the pan crop tool and I'm sure other editors will allow you to do the same thing. And that's your frugal camera crane and or jib. If you like this project, please come to thefrugalfilmmaker.com for more. And please find us on Instructables, Twitter and Facebook. And if you have a comment, question or request, please send it to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. We'll see you next time.